The yeas are 220, the nays are 215. The bill is passed. By the skin of their teeth, House Democrats made history Saturday night, and that was the easy vote. And if you're like me, and I know you are, then C-SPAN was all you watched on Saturday. Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABCNews.com's Top Line. I'm David Chalian. And I'm Rick Klein. Each weekday we're bringing you the very latest political headlines, reporting, insight, analysis, everything you need and want to know about politics. And the conversation goes all day long at Twitter. It's twitter.com slash the notes. Let us know what you think. Some of us were watching Northwestern Wildcats uh, upset the Iowa Hawkeyes' uh, undefeated record this season. They may Saturday. have had a bigger day than Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> I'll, I'll grant you that. What is your top line <laughs> to kick us th off this week? On to the Senate. The health care bill is off the House floor, finally, by the narrowest of margins. Actually, two votes to spare for House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. A big victory for President Obama and for congressional Democrats. But things are not getting any easier in the Senate. We know where the dynamics are. And the way that this vote broke down just highlights how difficult it's going to be. You need to get all of the Democrats. You can't afford any defections if you're Harry Reid in the Senate. Uh, Lindsey Graham's line that it is dead on arrival, uh, this House version of the bill, it is certainly true. And what's amazing is uh, we know differences existed between the House and the Senate side, but we really don't have a Senate bill yet, Rick. Uh, Harry Reid is still waiting for the CBO to come score. back, and it's in pieces. So this is going to take uh, quite a while yet. The numbers, listen to this. Get your pens and pads out, everyone. Ready? 39 Democrats voted against the health care bill, 31 of, one of whom represent districts that voted for John McCain, but eight Democrats from Obama districts voted against the bill, and one Republican. That's Joseph Gow of Louisiana. He's a Republican who represents that heavily uh, New Orleans, uh, heavily Democratic district there in New Orleans. And you may remember, not only did he steal the Republican Party of that talking point of having unanimous opposition, but you may remember that when he won last December, John Boehner, NRCC, all these people said the future is Gow. They were trying to say that his victory there was going to point the path forward to Republicans getting back in power. Now he's with the Democrats. And if you remember on our air last week, Michael Steele saying you'll, that the Republicans will come after any Republican who votes for health care, well, guess what? He's got someone to come after. Congressman Cow saying on CNN yesterday, hey, they need me <laughs> as much <laughs> as I need them. Tough choice. This bill only gets through by an 11th hour deal that allowed an anti-abortion amendment to come up on the House floor. It passed. Uh, but, of course, this goes against the wishes of the vast majority of the Democratic caucus, and it's got a lot of people second-guessing the strategy here. They're saying, they're saying they want to get it out in the Senate version of the bill. That's going to be very difficult because it's hard to get things more toward the center uh, out of the Senate. Uh, but uh, we're, just, we're just beginning to track the fallout of a vote that, that really Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer realized that they needed to get this done if they were going to get the votes. But by that same calculation, we now have Diana get the Democrat of Colorado, who says she has 40-plus signatures uh, of pro-choice Democrats who say that if it maintains if the Stupak Amendment stays inside this bill, they will vote against final passage. So now the calculus may be that they don't have the votes to pass it if it stays in. We'll continue to debate that as well. And finally today, warning signs. ABC News' Brian Ross is reporting that U.S. intelligence agencies were aware months ago that Hassan, the shooter at Ford, Ford Hood, the suspect there, was attempting to make contact with people associated with al-Qaeda. Rick, we do not know if the intelligence agencies uh, that Brian Ross is reporting about informed the Army that this was going on with one of their soldiers, uh, but clearly that's going to be focus of an investigation. Joe Lieberman talking about wanting to investigate it. And this comes as the president heads down to Fort Hood tomorrow for that memorial service. If this is an act of Islamic extremist terrorism on uh, a U.S. Army base, this is going to uh, be a story that's going to be with us for quite a while. And a big presidential moment for, for Obama tomorrow. No doubt about it. We're going to begin, though, with the massive health care victory that Democrats had in the House on Saturday night. We're joined by Jane Hampshire of FireDogLake.com, who has been just integrally sort of pushing the Democrats to the left as best she can throughout this entire health care process. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, I want to start on this abortion amendment and mm -hmm. what happened there on Saturday and sort of where we go from here. As Rick said, Nancy Pelosi clearly came to a calculation. She could not get the bill through the House if the Stupak Amendment did not get a vote uh, separately. Mm -hmm. So it got a vote. Uh, do, do you now see any way to strip that political reality of getting that stripped through the Senate at this point? Well, uh, the Senate, I don't think, is going to be a, a fertile ground for that particular battle. They aren't, they don't have the, the sort of culture warriors in the Senate uh, in, on the Democratic side. 
but getting it stripped out of conference is going to be, I think, incredibly difficult. You don't start your battle after the bill is passed. We, you know, were actually the big victors here because we started our fight for the public option on June 23rd and defined that as no triggers, no co-ops. And that's, in fact, what we got. Uh, the House members themselves signed a letter saying that they wanted to, you know, marry it to Medicare rates, and they defected on that two days later. So that wasn't a surprise to anybody. But uh, Bart Stupak wrote his first letter signed by 19 Democrats on July the 1st saying that they were going to hold up the health care bill. And for months now, we've all known that there were 25 right. Democrats Democrats who would vote against any bill no matter what. So he could get to 39 to block it if all the Republicans voted against, and except for Joseph Gao, they did. So where were the choice groups? Why weren't they whipping when we were whipping? And why wasn't the House whipping, you know, leadership whipping when we were whipping? And where were the progressives generally? I mean, you're, you talk about this, this Medicare commitment they made. They said they wanted the robust public option. They defined it that way. Uh, we end up not having a vote on single payer, despite some liberals who said we were, we're not going to vote for the whole package unless we get that. And you get this abortion amendment in there. There's a grand total of two out of that list of 39 are actually progressive members who voted against the bill uh, for some sort of protest. But where, where were they? To, where were they on a Saturday? Well, the lesson is get your digs in early. We started on June 23rd. We were successful. Bart Stupak started on July 1st. He was successful. Everybody else was sort of asleep at the wheel. I mean, bottom line, the Democrats don't really want to take on the choice issue. They do not want to spend the political capital. They want to keep their big tent large. They've also got an issue with the Catholics because the Republicans look at the 2008 election and they see that the Catholics switch from George Bush to Barack Obama in large numbers and really feel like that cost them the election. So you have Newt Gingrich converting to Catholicism and, and a big play made for that. So, you know, as inviting the bishops in to meet with them is a really unprecedented thing. I mean, they've been ready to roll on this for a long time. It wasn't a surprise. The only people that apparently surprised are Nirell and Planned Parenthood. Uh, uh, are, is the choice lobby, those, those groups, Nirell and Planned Parenthood, are they just impotent at this point in the American political uh, landscape? Well, they're part of a group called Common Purpose that meet the White House has liberal groups that meet every Tuesday and they really kept all those groups sidelined uh, they did not get into the battle in a meaningful way so that's one of the reasons that the public option is a real is a real phenomenal achievement because they really weren't pushing back on Democrats who were opposing it, nor were they uh, uh, supporting the Democrats who agreed that they would vote against any bill that didn't have one. So that was an external effort. That was pretty impressive. Uh, but, you know, uh, the, the choice groups are very much a part of that. They didn't take a stand. I assume that is because uh, that was what they were told that they needed to do. And they're using it predictably to fundraise right now and build their email list because that's what they do whenever there's a crisis. They never pay a price for not being there. And where does the, where does the, the, the online energy, the organizing energy move to now. You've got the Senate coming up. Clearly, uh, a lot of p folks want to change what was in the House version. What are you guys going to be working on next? Well, we're going to be working on uh, what we've always worked on, which is making sure that uh, co-ops and triggers and opt-outs don't make their way into the bill. Uh, we think there's actually a good chance to kill it if opt-out does make it in in the House because you've got too many members from the South uh, from red states who are basically slitting their own throats if they vote for it. So I think that that's a, a fair chance. Uh, you, you know, we've always calculated that we had to make the price of, you know, not having a public option in, uh, you know, the failure to pass health care and put the White House in the service of that cause in order to pass it or, you know, suffer a political loss. And I don't think they're quite there yet, but... Uh, you know, we're working on it. And let me just ask you very quickly, finally, uh, the DNC, Organizing for America, the Obama campaign arm, right, that right. Is, is now going after Republican members who voted against the health care bill, right? But not the 39 Democrats that voted against the health care bill. Is there something inconsistent in that to, to use in their strategy, do you see? Well, not only that, but Organizing for America this morning, after President Obama said he would work to get the abortion language out of the bill, are thanking the members who voted for the health care bill that also voted for the Stupak Amendment for their vote on Saturday. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to take a big stand. <laughs> Jane Hampshire, FireDogLake.com, thank you very much for being here.